church say amen. Amen, amen again. Oh, amen. My God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for all of you on the internet right now. We are live right here, right now. We thank you for the encouragement as we go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, a very familiar passage of scripture. Acts chapter 9. And I'm just going to give you a few verses to paint the picture. And then we will go from there. Acts chapter 9. It's good to see everyone on today. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 9. Let's look at verse number 1. And it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priest. Now, verse 6. Get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. If I could, as you go to, the, to your seats, help to get up. All right. Help to get up. Beloveds, if you look at verse number six, it says, Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Mm -hmm. Beloveds, whenever we look at this chapter, it's a very familiar chapter of Scripture, because this is the beginning of Paul's conversion. Now, we know Paul entered into the scene in Acts chapter 7. But as we go further and further into our own lives, we see the opportunity to understand we all need help. Amen. We all need to get up from a situation in our lives and every now and then we have to understand whatever tried to keep you down, yeah. God is here today. God is here today to let you know that your help is here right now. Amen. And God wants you to know you are loving on him because he has helped you a mighty long way. And when you look at it like that, beloved, I just say it like this. Help is here because you've been through some broken situations in your life. And how you look at it is even in the midst of the broken elevators of your life, the broken planes of your life, the broken stairways. Let me unpack it this way. Beloved, someone was there before you got on the airplane. Someone was there before you got on that broken elevator. Someone was there before you got on that stairway of your life. Mm. And let me encourage someone today. Beloved, no one wants to get on a broke situation. Yeah. Oh, let me say that again. No one wants to be in a broken situation and God comes along to let us know what God wants you to do is for you to let him help you. Amen. Let me unpack it this way for others because a lot of times we got to understand God don't need no help. God don't need help. God wants you to know and according to this chapter, according to what God is saying today, uh, help to get up. Help to know that God is here right now. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Help you know that God wants you to do this. 
and let him help you. Oh, uh, beloved, as we don't go a little deeper and a little further because you got to understand what God is trying to tell somebody today. You need help. Oh, that's your word of encouragement right there. Oh, uh, you need help, beloved. You need help. I know Romans 3 and 23, we all have fallen. Oh, uh, if we understand that much right there. Oh, uh, he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. I needed help to get up this morning. Yeah. I, I needed help to yeah. lay down and sleep last night. Yeah. I needed help for God to put a hedge of protection yeah. around me. Yeah. I needed help, Father, to just cover me in the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, am I talking to anyone yet? Yeah. I need help. Come on. Uh, help to get up. Help to get up from a broken elevator situation. Help to get up from a bad elevator, a bad airplane, a bad stairwell. Who wants to walk on a staircase that's jacked up? Uh, there ain't nobody wants to be on the escalator of life. And all of a sudden you start wondering, is this thing moving? Have you ever been on an airport, beloved, and you see those elevators? They're not even elevators. They're nothing but ramps. And all of a sudden you see that ramp stop moving. Ain't that just like our lives, beloved? But you need to call on Jesus because he's our help and he needs us to understand I'm your help. And God wants you to know this, beloved, if it's broken, it needs to be fixed. Let me paint the picture like this. A lot of times we just say it this way. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm talking to somebody today. I'm trying to let somebody know. Beloved, we all in a broken situation. We all been messed up, jacked up, tied up, tangled up in every situation of life. But God has come along to let us know if it is broken. Oh, won't you let God fix it? Won't you let him fix it? Uh, we sing the song, Jesus will. Oh, after a while, but our beloveds, we got to just submit to ourselves. We got to surrender to ourselves. We need help. And sometimes we understand, beloveds, people don't believe that. They don't have, let me paint that, let me unpack it this way. They don't have that type of faith. All right, all right. Uh, let me say it like my notes say it. Sometimes people don't believe they are broken. Mm. Right. They don't believe they need to be fixed. Yeah. Oh, we talking about the, the people down the street. Uh -huh. We ain't talking about fake Christians. Because every day I get up, I'm calling on Jesus. Yeah. Every minute, every hour. Oh, I need thee, oh Jehovah. All right. I need thee. Every minute, every hour, I need thee. Because our faith allows us to understand, had it not been for the Lord yeah. on my side, where would I be? And so that leads us to the text, beloved, that leads us to understand Saul and Ananias. I'm right in the chapter, beloved. I'm in the chapter of your life. And Saul and Ananias, watch this, discovered this was their time of testing. Oh, let me unpack it this way, beloved. Sometimes you got to understand God woke you up and knowing that you don't know what God's about to do. He's about to test you in your faith. And every now and then, we don't know what happened this whole week. We don't know what happened in all these nine months, but here we are in the month of September. Yes, yes. And beloved, it's our time of testing is right here, right now. And so we understand in the midst of a Saul and an Ananias, I'm in the text, beloved, you got to understand, in the midst of Ananias, he had his own testing. In the midst of Saul, he had his own testing. 
And here it is. They about to come together. Have you ever come together at your job or in your situation or what it looks like? Beloved, sometimes you got to understand as a child of God, God wants you to know whatever was broken in your life uh, that kept you down. God is here to help you get up. Oh, uh, beloved. God is here right now. Oh, uh, you got to admit, you got to go ahead and finally surrender and submit. Lord! Yeah, I'm broken. I am beat up. And so God is here to get you up. To get you out of some broken situation. And that's what leads us to the text on today. Look at verse 1 and 2 of chapter 9. It says, Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them back to Jerusalem. Beloved, here we are. Paul is still Saul, and, and he's about to run into uh, the greatest of greatest, the king of kings and the lord of lords. He was serving the wrong master. He was serving, well, maybe I'm going to take that, but I'm going to rewind that. I'm going to just do like I'm fly fishing. We are in the waters of life. And all of a sudden, you throw that net, you throw that bait out there, but you're trying to catch the wrong type of fish. And all of a sudden, God wants you to understand, beloved, God measures your motives because he is changing your ways. And all of a sudden, we see that in chapters 9, verses 1 and 2, because he is Saul coming down Damascus Road, and we understand what took place in the midst of Stephen. We understand even in chapter 8 and how we see Philip and, and what God can do with the Holy Spirit. And knowing that Philip was there with the Enoch and God allowed the Spirit of God to move Philip in the midst of the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, can you see it for yourself? You know you were a child of God. You know you spent time with God, and the Spirit of God just moves you. That's what happened with Philip in the chapter 8 of your life. But all of a sudden, something evil comes even greater in your life. And God said, my help, I'm your help. My help comes from the Lord. And so God allows us to understand in the midst of the text, he's measuring your motives. Oh, I'm going to unpack this this way. Can I preach it like this? He's measuring who you are in Jesus Christ. Oh, sometimes we got to understand. God knows your every situation. He knows who you are even before you was born. He knew every hair on your head. And all of a sudden, here you are on this earth. This ain't your final destination, especially when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So God comes along, and Paul says it down the road in the letter of Romans. We all have a measure of faith. And all of a sudden, all I'm saying is God is measuring your motives. He's measuring your faith because he's changing your way. And that's what those verses are telling us in the midst of, here comes picture to picture. All of a sudden, evil is coming down Damascus Road, headed to Jerusalem. Yeah. And God's about to pause your life. He's about to pause you to let you know God is here to get you up out of some broken situation. Let me say it like this. Paul didn't know he was broken. He didn't know he was messed up. He didn't know he was jacked up. He thought he was doing everything for the right leadership. And sometimes we got to understand, beloved, when you a child of God, God will reckon you 
God will make you realize who you really are in Christ. In other words, if you accepted me, then you're going to be with me. Mm. And all of a sudden, we understand we really need some help. We really need help. And God shows up to let us know. As he journeyed in verse 3 and 4, he came near Damascus. Here it is. And suddenly, there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to earth and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? Let me unpack that a little bit, beloved, because first of all, here's Jesus Christ, the glorified Christ. He's already had the resurrection. He's already sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's already ascended into heaven. He's showing his power right now, and somebody needs to know in the midst of your help, he is power, and all you've got to do is pray. And so when you look at that, beloved, you understand miracles of God happen because of his mercy. Uh, his mercy is in you, beloved. He's calling because God has already set a plan. He's already letting us know in the midst of how he came into this earth. He showed his humility. And as anyone knows, as a child of God, you have the humility if you are real about Christianity and God comes along and lets you know we all need help. Yeah. We need help because of his mercy. He humbled himself and showed up in our lives and he allows us to understand. Saul, it ain't like I really need you. Give you all a minute. But you got a choice. See, it might look like a question, but you need to know I'm going to pause you. It's going to look like anything else you've never seen before in your life. And I'm going to come right smack here in front of you and stop you in your tracks. You got a choice to continue to serve that master. Or you could continue and change your ways and serve me. That's basically what it looked like on Damascus Road, y'all. And, and so, in other words, I say it like this. A miracle took place. Because Saul was, he was steadfast. Y'all know the story of Saul. He was killing Christians. He was with Rome. He was doing the things of evil. And all of a sudden, God said, look, <laughs> I'm about to put this miracle on you, and it's because of my mercy, not because of anything you've done. Right. 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 I'm giving you mercy right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a chance. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you such a chance. I'm going to call you, and it's so important, I'm going to call you twice. Mm -hmm. Oh, some of y'all got them cell phones. All you got to do is hear that right number. Y'all got the chimes hooked up. You know. <laughs> what, what, what's up, baby? <laughs> you know. You know it, boy. And all of a sudden, Christ comes on, and he said, this is your miracle. You ain't you can't go any further. This is it in your earthly journey. Yeah, yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And all of a sudden we got to understand. Help! Yeah. No, no, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. Help! Mm -hmm. No, no, no. The devil can't do nothing. Help! Yeah. Say yeah. can no. Mm -hmm. The demons can't help. Mm -hmm. No. The underworld can't do help. Oh, you don't understand? <laughs> what does that? I can't see nothing. And the scripture says, watch this. I'm just right on schedule. I'm going to shut it down in a minute. The scripture says that all the ones he was traveling with, they, they, they heard, but they didn't hear what Christ 
see. And all I'm trying to say, beloved, is the miracle that you ask for is for you only. Ain't nobody can get in on your blessing. Amen. <laughs> because God knows who you are. He knows your motivation. He knows. You can't be a part of the, the household of the kingdom of God and expect to ride and ride. A, no. You can't ride or die off of my blessing. Come on. Oh. I'm going to preach this. You can't ride or die off my blessing. I got to stand before God, not you. You can stand down there with Lazarus and ask for that drop of water. And God comes along and lets us know we need help. And so he encourages us. He's telling us, look. Look at verses 5 and 6. And he said... Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priests. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Because this is where my sermon is coming from, beloved. Because the title of the text lets us know, help to get up. And we got to understand God makes use of your gifts because of his grace. Well, let me unpack it this way. Your gifts don't change. I created you. But some don't believe that. Some don't have the faith that you have as a child of God because of what took place on Calvary. Mm. Some don't have a 100% a, a faith. Some have 60 and 30. Mm. Some don't have the place of fertile ground. Some are built on the rocks. Some are built on unfertile or cliffs of life. And God came along to let you know, beloved, I'm here to get, let you have grace. I've given you mercy because you're still saying something to me. Uh, and that's what verse 5 and 6 says. allows us to understand. You've been through uh, the brokenness, the elevator, the broken elevators of life. I've given you mercy. You've been through the broken airplanes of life. I've given you mercy. You've been through the broken stairways of life. I still give you mercy. And you're not understanding? Well, watch this. Here's my grace. If my mercy ain't enough. Oh, uh, my grace is sufficient. If my mercy ain't enough, my grace is sufficient for you. You don't need nothing else. You don't need nothing else. And, and so the chapter 9 of your life lets you understand help to get up because maybe you just didn't want to get up this morning. Ugh. Help to get up. Maybe you didn't want to get up out of your situations of life. Maybe you wanted to continue to be in some bad situations. Just maybe. But God came along to tell you, you're not the only one, so I blinded you right now because I wanted you to understand the supernatural things of who I am. I am the God. I am El Elyon. Yeah. I am the king of kings. The I am that I am. I told Moses. I told Joshua. I told Deborah. I told Israel. Huh. And all of a 
sudden here we are in the chapter of your life. I'm speaking to somebody. Ah, maybe it's someone on the internet. Somebody needs to know in the midst of who God is. This, this is what impressed me about this in Damascus Road and how we look at it. Here's Saul who became one of the, the most beloved to bring the word of God in the New Testament of life. And God even goes further in the midst of Luke himself writing this in chapter 9 of the book of Acts and telling us not only did I deal with Saul but I have to let you know even in the midst of Saul, Peter who was who he is because he was with me. He shows us and he sends us encouragement because Peter had to understand in the midst of not only knowing who Saul was, who became Paul, and he sent Ananias, who Ananias understood the fear of God. And Ananias had to understand his own testing came in a different way, not in the way of what Paul was tested by, but God used Ananias to let him go, to know you need to go here and go get this man. Right now, he saw it. And I, I blinded him. And I know you fear me. I know, Ananias, you are a child of God. But you need to nurture him. Raise him up. And ain't that just like somebody who knows you a child of God? It ain't, can I preach this? It ain't never about you. Amen. Uh, help to get up ain't about you. Because you accepted Jesus Christ. And God wants you to grow in faith. And, and so here's, here's Dr. Moo. I love the way he penned this and how he was doing it. He gives us Damascus Road in the first part of the chapters of, of chapter 9. But then as we get further down deeper, all the way to the 42nd verse, we understand here's Peter. Peter, Peter. Peter comes along in verse 34. And just like somebody who needs to know this in their lives, God says, help, get up. In other words, somebody's speaking because you've been through. And God is trying to raise you up to be encouraged about who he is. And so God tells us in the midst of that same chapter of your life, I'm even going to show you what God can do through an already made disciple. And God came along and shows us Emmaus. And Peter comes along and, 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 and the Holy Spirit allows him to raise up another. And then here comes Tabitha. And God says, and he lets us know, God will help whoever needs help from others out of some broken situation. Oh, we know Peter. Peter was the one who was with God along with the other 12. And, and, and all of a sudden, he, he's going to deal with Paul. He's going to deal with Paul in Acts chapter 15. But first, Peter got to go to Cornelius' house in Acts chapter 10. But even before then, here he is. In the midst of his Jewish culture, God says, hold up. Hold up. I'm for everybody. <laughs> I'm a God of a second chance. I'm not a cultural God. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a generational God. So I'm going to help you, not only you, but I'm going to help your generation. And so God comes along and lets us know God heals in time for your help. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but he's an on-time God. He may not come when you want, but he'll be there right on time. And sometimes we got to build up our faith, beloved. 
Sometimes we got to get up out of our faith situations and stop being at this level of faith. Because God trying to raise you up to get up in your faith. Stop going to work in this type of faith. But get up in the faith that God has given you. Stop dealing with your family with this type of faith. Get up in that type of faith. Stop dealing with your friends and your neighbors with this type of faith. Get up and understand what God is doing. God heals in his time, not your time. So many times we got to understand the help that he's saying because healing is in your tragedy. All right. Mm -hmm. Beloved, <laughs> when we're going to realize that we don't go through something, God has said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God walked on water to help Peter. God held down the demons of life. He held down the enemy so he could create me. And all of a sudden we understand, beloved, what makes you think that we ain't going to go through nothing? We all go through trials and tribulations, but the joy comes in my healing. Weeping may endure for a night, yeah. but joy, oh, right. oh, joy, yeah. joy comes in the morning light, beloveds. That light came on Damascus Road. That light was the voice of God. That light, if you just let him, oh, here it is, and I'm done, beloveds. Oh, uh, you got to understand. Your help to get up is healing because God wants you to cooperate with him. And somebody might not even accept this, and that's why I started way back. Because our faith ain't strong because you're not cooperating. God is telling you every day what to do. He says, pick up your cross daily. Whatever that cross is and follow him. I need some cooperation. I ain't going to leave you. I ain't going to forsake you. I know you serving me now. But you ain't cooperating. <laughs> and a lot of times in our Christian walk, beloved, we think that we're doing everything. But God is saying, I'm the whisper in the wind. I'm the still small voice. I'm the wheel in the middle of the wheel. In other words, stop looking for the big Damascus Road situations. I showed you in the chapter of your life, not only Saul, not only Paul, not only Ananias, but I also showed you Peter. I showed you Tabitha. I showed you a name. And every time he said, I sent someone to raise you up. <laughs> I sent someone so you could get up out of your situation. I sent someone. They can't raise themselves from a broken situation. Oh, beloved, death is nothing but something that God can heal. He's the first resurrection. Only. And he shows us right here in the text. <laughs> I'm going to show you your life right here. In your life. So help. Yeah. How to help to Jesus. How to help because he went to Calvary for you. How to help because of his grace and mercy. And only the blood of Jesus can help you. So God wants us to understand, yes, he can do. He can do. And all you have to do is believe 
that healing happens because you are cooperating, not disassociating. Oh, that's a 25 cent word. God wants you to associate himself. Tell the world, put on the t-shirt. Say, Jesus, oh, Jesus, set me free. Oh, that's enough, beloved. That's enough. You're going to get it on the way home. God wants you to know it. <laughs> uh, he wants you to understand. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God for showing me what God can do in our lives. Because healing happens when I cooperate with God. Oh, isn't it a joy? We saw Mary and John cooperate. They understood because they was there on Calvary. And Jesus showed up. He took back the keys of hell. He rose. He got up. And he lives in our hearts. Because it's, ain't that joy? Ain't that joy because I'm healed. Because I believe in my faith of my healing. Healing in every situation, beloved. Oh, I know he can do it. Won't he do it in your life? Give God a hand clap of praise. The invitation is extended to somebody. Somebody on the internet right now needs to know that Christ is love. Not was love. He is love. He is our help. He is eternal. He is faithful, beloved. And when you understand that, we understand we all have sin that comes short of the glory of God. God demonstrates his love for us. And while we yet we were still sinners, he died for us. God lets us know that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is died and God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says we are saved. So understand, beloved, Christ is love. Maybe somebody needs to know that today. Every head bowed, every heart humble. Father, we thank you for understanding all our help. All our help comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you. We accept him. We cooperate with him. And we have acceptance and agreement with Christ right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are at on the internet, give God your heart. Give the local pastor your hand. God bless you. Bye-bye.